People love to see things zest. I don't get it, but people love it. I'm gonna show you how to make a Charlotte Russe cake, which offers all of the decadence and indulgence of what you would think when you think of French pastry, but with the added benefit that you don't even have to turn on your oven, and you can use whatever berries and flavors you like most. The Charlotte Russe cake is undoubtedly a dessert to show off. The first step to making our cake is actually making the syrup that we're going to use to brush the lady fingers. So we're gonna just knock it out in the beginning and set it aside and we'll come back to it when we need it. In this recipe, we're gonna be using two whole lemons. We're gonna be using the juice in the syrup, but we don't wanna waste the zest. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your microplane or your zester, and we're gonna zest both of our lemons and set the zest aside, save it for later. I'm gonna roll my lemon, cut it and get a quarter cup of lemon juice. And I'm just gonna add it to my saucepan. I'm adding a quarter cup of granulated sugar and I'm adding two sprigs of thyme. Thyme is a hard herb. As we heat it over the stove top, it will really easily release its very potent and flavorful oils, which is why we're only using two sprigs, and infuse the syrup with a really delicate thyme flavor that complements the lemon. So I'm gonna put this overheat, it will take maybe a minute or two for the sugar to dissolve and for the syrup to come to a boil. And then I'm gonna remove it from the heat and let it cool. This thyme lemon syrup is ready for us to use and we're gonna set it to the side. Now we move on to the most important component of the Charlotte Russe. And that is the mousse layer that will make up most of the cake. The first step is to make the custard that we then let cool before we fold in our whipped cream. Since this recipe relies on gelatin to set the mousse, we have to first bloom the gelatin or let it soften. If you have powdered gelatin and you just pour it into a custard, it will clump up no matter how much you heat it and it will not dissolve and evenly disperse in the custard. So the first thing we have to do is combine our gelatin with some water and let it soften for about five minutes. And I'm gonna set this aside while I get my milk and thyme and all of that good stuff going on the stove. The first step to making our custard is to warm our milk and we're gonna use the warm milk to temper our egg yolks because if we add egg yolks to a hot pan, they will immediately scramble, which leads to a really gross, clumpy mixture that is not anywhere near a custard. I have one cup of whole milk right here that I'm gonna add to my saucepan. As my milk warms on the stove, I'm gonna add three sprigs of thyme and that beautiful lemon zest that we got from the lemons in the beginning of the video. These two ingredients are going to infuse the milk with a beautiful and delicate aromatic touch to our custard. You do not want your milk to come to a boil. You just want it to come to a light steam. Then you're going to take that warm milk and we're going to whisk it into an egg yolk and sugar mixture. So just to be extra cautious and to make sure that I don't scorch my milk, I'm gonna go ahead and whisk together my egg yolks and my sugar so that they are ready to go and I can give all of my attention to the milk on the stove. So in my mixing bowl here, I'm going to combine four egg yolks granulated sugar, and I'm gonna whisk it until it becomes pale yellow, which will take about two minutes. And now I'm gonna take my milk and throw it on my stove top. Again, we're just looking for light wisps of steam around the edge of the pot. My milk is steaming and I can smell the thyme and the lemon. I'm going to remove the thyme sprigs from the milk. Now for tempering the egg yolks. So I'm just gonna stream half of my warm milk mixture into my egg yolk and sugar mixture, whisking constantly, and this just allows the egg yolks to slowly come up in temperature. Okay, and now that my mixture is nice and whisked, I'm gonna pour it into the saucepan with the rest of the milk. And now we add the final two ingredients of the custard itself. Here I've got a quarter cup of store-bought lemon curd. If you wanna make your own, that works great. We're also gonna add our bloomed gelatin, which at this point will feel about as firm as a pencil eraser, <laughs> but I promise that will change. Okay, now I'm gonna transfer this to the heat. We're gonna want it over medium high, and I'm gonna whisk it the entire time it's on the stove. As I pull my finger across the spoon, you can see that the custard stays where it is, and that's how you know the custard is just set. Our custard itself is now done, but in order to turn a custard into a mousse, the custard has to be at room temperature. We're gonna set this aside to cool for an hour and 15 minutes, go ahead and make the base layer of our cake, and then we'll return to our custard after the time is up. Part of the beauty of a Charlotte Russe cake is that we never really have to turn on our oven. And that is assuming that as the recipe calls for, you buy store-bought ladyfingers. If you feel like making your own ladyfingers, 
Go right ahead. You'll notice that they have two rounded edges, at the top and at the bottom. But in order for them to fit evenly along the base of our cake pan, we need the bottom edge to be removed. You're gonna take all of your lady fingers and simply cut off one rounded edge so that you have lady fingers that are rounded on one side and flat on the other. You might be wondering, what do I do with all of these rounded bits? Don't throw them away just yet, uh, because we'll use them to fill in the cracks in the base of our cake. Before we begin layering our ladyfingers in our cake pan, we need to line our cake pan with parchment paper on all sides. I'm simply going to take the bottom out of my springform pan and lay the parchment paper on top of the base and lock it into place. Now I have two long, thin strips of parchment paper that I'm going to fold in half and I'm going to simply place it in the edge of this springform pan. All right, and I'm using my second strip and overlapping it just so that the edge of the cake pan is fully covered. All right, and now for the part that makes this cake look really stunning. Uh, we will make a perimeter of these lady fingers standing up all around the edge of the cake. The lady fingers come already cut in half for you, and so we're just gonna pull apart these two layers and use these single layers of cake around the edge. It's important that the outside of the lady fingers be what touches the edge of the cake pan, not the inside. The inside is gonna help soak up some of that mousse. And I'm gonna continue going around my cake pan with more lady fingers until it's fully surrounded. And now I'm gonna use the remaining lady fingers to line the bottom of the pan. And this is really just like a little geometry puzzle that I never really quite win. That's why we kept those scraps that we cut from the beginning because when I see little holes like this one in my cake, I just take one of those edges and I shove it in. When the mousse goes into this cake pan, it's going to be very liquid. If a little bit of your mousse seeps out one edge of one piece of cake, it's not the end of the world. But we're gonna go ahead and do everything that we can to prevent that from happening. Okay, we're gonna take the lemon syrup that we made at the beginning of the video, and we're gonna use a pastry brush to dab all of the lady fingers with some of this lemon thyme syrup. The next component that we're going to layer is a quarter of a cup of blackberry jam. This is going to go on the very bottom of the Charlotte Russe, and the blackberry jam will seep into some of the lady fingers on the bottom, and so it will be a stark color difference in each slice of cake, and it will also keep any of the mousse from seeping through the bottom of the cake. Our very last step before setting this aside until our mousse is ready is to take some fresh blackberries, slice about half of the blackberries in half, and lay them cut side down all across the base of the cake. So you can start to imagine what this is actually going to be like in the end. Each slice of Charlotte Russe will at the very bottom have a soft, syrupy, blackberry jam infused lady finger, but sitting right on top of that is going to be a tart and juicy piece of actual blackberry before you get to this massive layer of airy, soft lemon thyme mousse. And now all we have to do is make the mousse and pour it in. I'm gonna set a fine wire mesh strainer into a large bowl and I'm gonna strain my custard into this large bowl just to remove any bits of anything. Maybe some of your egg yolk did set, maybe some thyme leaves got left behind. This is just a fail-proof way of making sure that your custard is perfectly smooth. This recipe calls for one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. And we will use one half of that heavy cream and sweeten it with powdered sugar to decorate the top of the Charlotte Russe. But the other cup of heavy cream, I whipped by itself to medium peaks, and we're gonna use this to fold into the custard. I'm now gonna add one third of my heavy whipping cream, mix it in, and then I'm gonna add the rest of the whipping cream and mix and fold until it's all perfectly incorporated. I am pleased to announce that our mousse is finished. So I will now take this mousse and pour it directly into my springform pan on top of the blackberries and the layered ladyfingers. And it has to set in the fridge for four hours at a minimum. All right, my Charlotte Russe that is set is right here and I'm very excited to show it to you because it uh, already looks beautiful and we're about to make it look 
even more beautiful. I'm gonna remove it from its pan and the pan will come easily right off because we've wrapped it so well in parchment paper. So the last half cup of heavy whipping cream that's called for in the recipe, we're gonna throw into our sand mixer um, and we're gonna whip it with two tablespoons of powdered sugar just to give it that perfect amount of sweetness. I'm gonna transfer the whipping cream to a piping bag and pipe a decorative pattern on the top of the cake. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my remaining blackberries and place them around the edge of the cake and then pipe in the rest with some of the whipped cream. I'm gonna garnish with some thyme leaves and then a final dusting of powdered sugar. I am very happy to show my final Charlotte Russe. Words cannot describe how excited I am to take my first bite, so here we go. Everything about this dessert is delicate. From the flavor of the thyme, to the flavor of the lemon, to the texture of the lady fingers, which are very spongy, but the bottom and the sides have that lemon thyme syrup so that they're also sweet and very soft. And then the texture of the mousse, my spoon glides through it like cream. In addition to the light airiness of the mousse and the whipped cream, you get these big chunks of blackberry that as you bite through them kind of burst with an acidic, sweet sharpness that balances out the entire bite. It's the perfect cake for something where you want to show off a little. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, then please like and subscribe below so you don't miss any videos like this in the future. And if you make this, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye.